Hey guys, you guys hear me? Oh, my hair is on. Ugh. You know, I'm like, I need to be working today, so I'm not gonna really be able to read the comments because I'm gonna try to be safe here. You know, I'm gonna try to be safe. Um, but if you guys can hear me, then great. It's like I actually have to get some work done today. That sucks. Um, but yeah. Okay, so. <sighs> some of your responses to what you think I should do in regards to this bride situation are hilarious. First of all, I thought that I was practically shadow banned on Instagram. Like you had to pretty much type in my entire screen name, right? for all of this to pull up, because some of you have that problem, like since March. So how come she types in Talia and she gets three options? I'm like, wow, uh, and can I whine right now? Because I've been whining that I'm shadow banned and apparently those are the first three that pop up. That's, anyway. So, uh, what am I gonna do? It's not easy, right? Um, I don't know if anybody else is in this kind of predicament. Why would that be such a big deal? Like, be true to yourself, you know? And then, like, I don't want to be a hypocrite because, well, I don't tell people to not support other companies, but I personally, after, you know, a lot of companies push vaccines, like when Honest Company did their push, when Hello Bello did their push, I was like, all right. My baby's not going to be crapping in your diapers anymore because you're all about pushing vaccines. So can I really be that upset if somebody doesn't want to support me, you know, um, because they... But this is the problem with the medical freedom thing. Everyone, whether you're pro-vaccine or anti-vax, should be for medical freedom. Everybody should be for the right for parents and just people because they're it's for adults now in most cases with a lot of jobs we should just always be for the right for people to make informed medical decisions for themselves for their bodies especially if these things come with risks it's so like to wrap your mind around this kind of logic it shouldn't take much but it does take a lot when you've been so incredibly indoctrinated and brainwashed into thinking the greater good and this herd immunity BS, which is why I tell people like, look, if you're new here, new to this conversation, you need to first jump off this live. Don't watch this live. <laughs> Please watch at least four to five different highlights. Um, start with the vitamin K because it's the first one, the hep B. Um, watch the herd immunity one because it kind of explains the entire herd immunity um, you know, concept and that it was originally coined for natural immunity. Like herd immunity does happen when you naturally get the infection and your body goes through it and then boom, what do you know? What do you know? Lifelong immunity. And that's also why I like to point out that, you know, the tetanus one that they love to push on you for anything. Like we're about to do a parody soon here. You know what I mean? Stub your toe, tetanus. Cut your finger, tetanus. Hangnail, tetanus 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 like and the thing is they're not offering you the tetanus vaccine they're offering you the tdap okay so they're gonna give you diphtheria pertussis and tetanus all in one and some of you have husbands or kids that get into multiple scrapes and you're going into these emergency rooms and they're just giving you tetanus and every single time you take it your body now your immune system is gonna suck even worse for next year when whooping cough goes around because surprise, surprise, whooping cough, which is pertussis, is always going around. It's just like always going around, coincidentally, around the time like that it's also flu season and, and you know. Anyway, so please watch those prior to listening to me. <laughs> and know that when they wanna talk about herd immunity, tetanus is not contagious. So those that are main like you know gung-ho on the DTAP and TDAP for herd immunity is like tetanus isn't contagious so your entire argument on herd immunity is just shot literally you're shot so that's why we do these things that's why I 
I go down the road of like educating people because the education part where you have to inform other people and you start at the ABCs of vaccines, which is why I recommend following V is for vaccine. Whether you agree with how people advocate or not, those signs that they hold up are so incredibly like it's all fact on there. You can't argue any of the facts. They'll hold up signs like, you know, manufacturers have no liability. Okay, how are you going to argue that whether you're for vaccines or against? They don't have liability, you know? So educating needs to start from just like those 8 to 12 basic principles of vaccines, just understanding that it's a product that comes with risks and it's a product that is being mandated in a lot of places and there's no liability. So what is it for people to like not understand that? You know, Um, anyway, freaking broken record all day long. So this bride issue, right? Some of you guys are like, just say it's for like a personal family account, like personal family account with 24,000. I don't know. You know what? Some of you stop. (laughs) It's just a personal account. It's no big deal. Do you like how I threw up like six pictures onto my Talia studio account just now? I'm like, oops, because I don't really update that one anymore because all those weddings are like out of town weddings because have you done a Vegas wedding? You know, it's like 10% of Vegas weddings are done in a classy, nice way. And I have shot some nice Vegas weddings, okay? Some is the key word there. The bulk of them, you're walking into these rooms and because it's a destination wedding, you got people celebrating their bachelorette and bachelor parties the night before. So you walk into these rooms and it's like bridesmaids hooked up to these IV, you know, machines. It's just like, they're just not the classiest, okay? They're just not the classiest. <laughs> and I gotta slap my name on there. So I, I have to leave town a lot. And this is, why, this is why, guys, I can sympathize with anybody who has to leave a state like California. What do you think we had to go through? That state was my bread and butter for my business, okay? We were doing 35 to 40 some odd weddings a year. It was like, my business and we had to pretty much say goodbye to it and then when we moved to Vegas and it took like two years we couldn't just up and leave you know oh my gosh it's such a luxury to just like up and leave actually it's absolutely freaking not okay if you only knew if you only knew the strain it put on every every corner of my life all right taking a step back 10 steps back I to move in with my parents for like almost a year okay like come on just doing that, <laughs> you know what kind of strain that puts on like just your marriage alone that you got to take like 10 steps back like this in order to get medical freedom? Like, okay, the ocean breeze is nice and all, but have you tried being able to make an informed decision? Like, have you tried it? You know, it's not easy. So we're already taking a hit left and right. So for me to be like, risking putting that you know onto potential clients that they don't know anything about this topic um and yeah it'll totally turn people off it turns people off when you tell them that they've been poisoning themselves and their kids okay there's no nice way to say stop poisoning your children there's no nice way to say stop because like are these even vaccine injuries anymore it's not a vaccine injury your body's just reacting to poison and all of us react to poison in different ways because surprise, surprise, the creator made us so unique. We are wired so beautifully and magnificently that when you put poison into your system, depending on the amount, how much poison you did that day, did you space out the poison? Did you like your body? And then it's going to take its time. You know, that poison has now been in the system for a pretty long time. Has it just been like, it varies. It varies. So Surprise, surprise, all of these autoimmune conditions, all of these chronic ailments and disorders and things that we now have to depend on pharma for down to like your diabetes is just your body reacting to having been poisoned years and years ago or continuous poison. So it's really, really unique actually. Can we even call it like, 
vaccine injury. You know what? That's why they get away with all this crap. Because that's why they get away with it. Why do you think they want to do combo doses? Because then you can't pinpoint which vial poisoned you. And they're not going to get rid of all of it. Well, you know, the measles is so damn scary. It's so scary, but we can't like just get rid of the measles because it's a measles, mumps, rubella. Because we've stressed for so long the importance of the rubella. Like, you guys, there is a design to this. There is a design to the confusion. If you if you haven't gotten it by now, you got to wake up to that. And they're really, it's just hard. There's like really no nice way to say this to some people. Okay. And bear with me, I have tried. I've been doing this for how many years now? I have, case in point, I have lost a lot of clients. And when you're talking wedding packages and this being like our only business for so long, 70% of an entire wedding to lose is a big chunk to lose. And I get that, you know, it's my dad's always saying that line that the whole rejection is protection. I get that, it probably, these clients that have fired me, I'm glad in the, at the end of the day. I'm glad that I didn't have to deal with them after the fact, okay? One of my brides from years ago, just other photographers that she's hired that's done other photos and stuff for her now, at this, she's, like, she's like this thorn in their side for them. So it's almost like bullets that I've dodged, you know? Which, that's fine and all, but like, guys, it's like in the thousands of dollars when you're talking about money that's just no longer come my way and I do have to mention that the December one that fired me last year that date did get rebooked miraculously like seven weeks prior to that wedding it got rebooked by a great couple who is very much woke to this she's actually a nurse and um, she follows me and she agrees and she like just chimes in all the time anyways so I felt like that was definitely a blessing in disguise. It's just when you're going through it, it sucks, you know? When you're going through it, it really sucks because they like your work, they like you, you meet them. It's a very personal experience. Photography is a very personal experience, which is why I also don't deal with these Vegas weddings because these people wanna just budget. It's like, oh, this Craigslist photographer only wants 20 bucks an hour. It's like, then hire his ass. Go get your $20 an hour photos. Like, don't hire me. You know, it's, I don't like that. That's what I deal with here. That's the like sacrifices that I've had to make. <laughs> because the California bride wants the photos. They send you the Pinterest boards. They send you the, old, you know, the, the full, all of it. Where you're just like, dude, I should, I seriously, one day when I'm done and retired from doing weddings, I can't wait to share everything while keeping people private. These Pinterest boards, man, they kill, they kill me. I secretly die inside when they hand me these Pinterest things and you're going, golly, you have pinned an entire garden wedding and you're getting married in a church, in a church with orange lighting. But thank you for all of these garden wedding shots. <clears throat> um, but it's cool, it's cool, you know? Just little things. The pet peeves of a, of a photographer, yes, it happens. We have all of our pet peeves with our jobs. Big time. I won't go down that road because that could be like a really bad long road. Um, I'll save that. Save that for another day. Many of you are still clients and still following me. Which, by the way, I will be in San Diego end of October. And so that last weekend is when I'm going to be doing family holiday photos because I'm not going to be... Do, I'm only going to spend one weekend doing that in San Diego this year, so I'll probably only have like seven to eight spots. Um, I don't want to keep continuously going out that way. You're like, where am I going today? Well, I got to figure things out in my life. Um, my husband is like, we need to... So there's this like convention going on in Vegas. There's always a convention in Vegas, but there's this big convention going on for Hempworks, the CBD company that we love. And Jeff is obviously going to be there because he's like, building teams and he's like so excited for this and I'm not that I'm not excited for it but I'm like oh three days of like lectures and stuff like that I just I can there's so many other things that I want to do <laughs> clearly like there's so many other things I want to do places I want to go so he's doing most of it I'm gonna go for like the goodies and you know to like meet a bunch of people because actually 
so many people, like this company is um, Pro Medical Freedom. So the owners of this company were like billionaires by now, you know, they're only like in their third year. Billions, I think they did like a hundred million dollars their first year, like they're not in debt. But I love that the owners are Pro Medical Freedom. And so I can also talk about whatever I want, as long as it's within FDA guidelines. <laughs> But they don't, you know, they wouldn't care versus other companies that their uplines get on your butt if you want to talk about certain topics. It's like, I don't want to deal with that. So that's why I love this company too. And actually going to this thing is going to be like going to one big anti-vax convention because so many of my favorite people are in town. And I got to say, if you see me or Jeff and I haven't offended you with my words, please come and say hi. Please come and say what's up because I'm like, that's what excites me about this. Because there's going to be so many woke people in a building and in a room. But then that also like sets in the paranoia and I'm just like, oh, here we go. Are they going to false flag another Vegas? Okay, I can't even, I can't even talk about it like that. I can't. Two years have gone by since the other thing, you know, not saying people didn't die. Obviously people died, but mm, very sketchy and we just got to go with it. We just got to go with it. Really, Mandalay Bay, you have security in every dang section of your hotel you have security every you have the kind of camera footage security like vegas you guys it is walled up vegas has like insane security you know what i'm saying they can tell with their cameras if you're counting cards at a table but you're telling me the only picture that we get of like the one shooter is like like he's not like his eyes aren't even open oh and then and then everybody calls them out on it and then they want to give us another photo and it's like it's like a picture with him like from 20 years ago. Like, come on, Vegas. I probably shouldn't even be talking about it right now because then they're gonna like wire, the, you know, it's bad. Nobody in town wants to talk about it. And like a bunch of my neighbors who work on the casinos, who work the strips, you guys know how far Mandalay Bay is from freaking Caesar's Palace, right? And from the Bellagio, like you know how far it is? And the fact that there were, they were closed off in all these other hotels, they were closed down in the Bellagio because there was an active shooter there. They heard gunshots at Caesar's, like guys, Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody in this town. It's like, hey, remember that shooting from two years ago? And there's, mm -hmm, mm, yeah, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Had people who were there at the actual event. I have a relative that was actually there at the concert. She opened up her phone the next day and it was wiped. She had photos in her phone that were not photos she took and everybody experienced the same thing. I'm telling you, you better research that. And this message will delete in five, four, three, two, probably won't save this live, but if you have not looked into that, pfft. all right, so why am I saying this as I'm on my way to a possible like get together with a bunch of woke people? <laughs> so anyways, um, I'm excited about that, but Jeff is like, we need to like focus on building teams because if you're gonna continue to lose clients in photography, <gasps> I know, and you got, and I've lost like, I've lost friends too, man. I've lost like people that I thought were friends you know, over like posts and it's just really hard. Like, can, you know, it, it sucks. It's very hurtful actually that you've done these people's like, you've shot their weddings, you've shot their maternity sessions, you've done their newborn photos, you've done like family photos every year for holiday photos. And then one year they just stop calling you. One year they just stop calling you completely. And then you see that they just, they don't respond to your emails and then like, you figure, well, maybe they didn't want to do holiday pictures this year. And then you see that they're posting up that they went and hired somebody else to do pictures for them. And, and then you're thinking, well, it can't be because they hated my work because my work lines their hallways at their house. You know, my work is, and then you find out through the grapevine that, oh, they've talked crap about you and your husband. And you know, they've said things and a lot of things that they've said are very hateful. And, you know, well, just, just wait, just wait till her kids get sick. And it's almost like wishing illness on your kids so that you learn a lesson because of how you talk. I'm just saying, guys, I've been through so much of the same kind of pain that many of you are going through now, but just like multiply that by 10 years ago when there, all, when there wasn't even like a following, like when people who actually agreed with you were so embarrassed to admit that they agreed with you. Like imagine that versus now you got like, Move, the movement is the movement right now, which is amazing. This ripple effect is like, I'm so grateful. But just, just imagine how hard this has been, okay? 
I have had many a long cry over this. I've had many a um, forget just being hit financially. Like this is this is a painful, painful um, topic all around because how do you do it? How do you do it? Because for every one like irritating message that comes in where they're like, you are spewing misinformation, you know, I get like 20 to 30 that are like, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for speaking out, you know, and God, how do you do that? So yes, how do I, like, there's no way to do this without faith. There's no way to do this without God. I wake up every day and I'm like, okay, what now? Who do I need to speak to? Who needs to hear this message? And it's like, it's evangelizing, but in a different way, right? So, um, and, and I just know that he'll like protect and take care of my family, even though we have to take mega hits. And then he's made it so that like, I don't want the things that I wanted in the past, you know? It was like, wow, well, we're not gonna make this much money, but whatever, he's still providing for the roof over my head and clothes for my kids and food in our bellies. And I would just be like so bitter. And then over time, it's like I've prayed also to stop longing for a lot of these material things that I really did long for in the past. I hate to admit, it's so embarrassing to admit, like I wanted you know I want the big kitchen and I want like the like I want the beautiful like flooring and just he's he has seriously made it so that there's like not even an inch in my body that like I can appreciate the nice things but there's like nothing in me right now that like now we're in a we're in a place where I could totally have the flooring but then I'm like I don't want the flooring I want a generator like I want and I'm like looking into other things for survival like I want the homestead now I want you know I don't care about like having the farmhouse sink in the recreational residential ticky tacky neighborhood I want like a farmhouse and then whatever sink is in my farmhouse is technically a farmhouse sink so I'm just I'm in another <clears throat> which is great you know but you could tell like it was it was definitely a struggle it was definitely a struggle to put that aside and so funny because my daughter asked me earlier today she's like Oh crap, I get, this, is, this is busy right now on the strip. I know this is going to be a massive convention. Well, look at that. Boys to Men is in town again. Um, so I... Oh, my, my daughter this morning, okay? She's... This morning, Amelia goes, um, Mom... Oh wait, my phone is like dying, so I don't want this to cut off on me. One second. Guys, I'm going to have to take my headset off. So the volume here is going to sound kind of crappy. Sorry. Can you guys still hear me? I had to because the phone was dying. So this this morning, my, my daughter goes, she was watching Beauty and the Beast. And she's like, Mom, what is, um, what's provincial mean? You know, because that, oh goodness. It's like reconnecting. Hopefully you can hear me. She's like, what does provincial mean? Because of that portion in that song, you know. I want much more than this provincial life. And she's running on the hillside and she's singing about wanting more. Oh my God, this thing is not, this thing says it's not working. Can you guys hear me? Pause due to poor connection. Okay, I don't know, it keeps like reconnecting, terrible. So yeah, she sings about This is terrible. Can you guys hear? Awful. So she's singing about wanting more than this provincial life. And I'm going, well, a province. So I had to explain that to Amelia. I was like, okay, there's like the cities, there's towns. Um, this thing really sucks right now, this reception. So it's like, there's cities, there's towns, you know, and the province is it. And I'm like, I actually want a provincial life. Like, Bell had it all wrong. You guys, first of all, that movie is just uh, one big Stockholm Syndrome type movie, right? She doesn't want the provincial life. She doesn't want, she wants to be free and do what she wants. And she, like, ends up, like, falling in love with a beast who, like, pretty much puts another hold on her life. So she's like, I don't want to be with a man like Gaston who's controlling. And how terrible, right? Like, okay, besides Gaston's arrogance, I'm like, I kind of want a Gaston, 
You know, he knew how to hunt. Like, Gaston would be able to take care of Belle's ass. For sure. Besides the fact that, like, maybe, okay, fine, he didn't really like to read. But he knew what he was doing. Okay? Gaston could, like, I, I watched Beauty and the Beast and I was like, yeah, okay, this is so trippy. As a kid, I was like, ah, Gaston is terrible. And now I'm like, now I'm just like, Gaston knows his stuff. <laughs> Gaston could take care of me in the wilderness. And Gaston is definitely off grid. Like, he could totally hang with the off grid. He, um, you know, I know it, that sounds terrible. So, but I was trying to talk to Amelia about that now. I'm like, look at this. Who would you choose? Okay, Belle was actually kind of terrible about this beast thing. Um, just made no sense. Made no sense. Well, okay, so now you want to like, you want your freedom. You know, you want your freedom, but you also want to live in a castle for your entire life. Okay. Anyways, so um, this thing sucks with the reception and it keeps pausing on me. So, um... We will chat soon. I'm going to end this here because it's not saving. Um, hopefully this saves, actually. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye.